Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on ORCA 3D Marine CFD, which provides accurate, affordable, and reliable CFD analysis capabilities to naval architects without the need to be a CFD specialist. We're very pleased with the response today. It's great to see a lot of familiar names here, as well as a lot of new ones. And welcome to everyone, and a special welcome to the folks who are here that provided some of the images that you just saw in the short video. You can move to the next slide, Larry. Uh, we have an interesting presentation for you today. Uh, let me begin with a few introductions. My name is Bruce Hayes, and I'm a naval architect with ORCA 3D. We have two other presenters as well, beginning with Larry Lieben, uh, a naval architect and the lead developer of ORCA 3D. Following Larry will be Dr. Cheng J. Wang, a hydrodynamicist from Samerix, who is our partner in the development of ORCA 3D Marine CFD. Please note that you are in listen-only mode, but you can type questions into the question box in the GoToWebinar control on your screen. This webinar is being recorded and we'll follow up the webinar with an email that will include a link to the recording and a summary of questions and answers. So with that, I'll turn things over to Larry Liebman to get started. Thank you, Bruce. And thank you again, everybody, for uh, taking the time to join us. Um, as Bruce said, uh, the webinar is being recorded in case uh, you miss something that you want to hear uh, later. And it should last uh, about an hour. So uh, first, I want to start with an overview of the agenda for the webinar. Um, as you can see here, uh, the first item in our agenda are to discuss the objectives of the webinar. And really, we have two primary goals uh, for this webinar. Uh, in some of our past webinars that you may have seen, we focused uh, primarily on what we refer to as the base version of ORCA CFD. Uh, and that base version uh, targets mostly uh, straight ahead simulations for measuring resistance and uh, powering or propulsion performance. Uh, but even though uh, it seems like it's targeting fairly simple analyses, there's really a lot of derived analyses uh, and additional information you can obtain from even the base version. So uh, one of our objectives is to give you an idea of what some of those additional analyses that you can use even with the, the base version of Orca CFD. And then our second uh, objective in this webinar is to focus more on what we refer to as the premium version of, of ORCA CFD. Uh, the premium version opens up uh, a much broader set of the capabilities of the CFD program called Samerix MP and really offers a, a virtually limitless set of simulations and analyses that you can perform. Um, so we, we're excited to show you uh, all the different types of analyses you can perform with the premium version, and we'll show a few uh, specific examples. Um, so before we get into um, some of those details, for those of you who may not uh, have attended a prior webinar or may have uh, seen it but don't really remember what we talked about, we want to give a little overview uh, first of what ORCA Marine CFD is, talk a little about the vision, the architecture, the workflow, and we'll do a very quick demonstration just to show how easy it is uh, to use the software. Then we'll uh, go into uh, a comparison of the capabilities of our base version of ORCA CFD uh, and contrast that with things that you can do with the premium version, which again uh, is, is more of the focus of this webinar. Um, while we can't show you everything, of course, uh, in a limited one-hour webinar that you can do with the premium, we picked a few case studies. Uh, we have three case studies to give you an idea of the kinds of things you can do to improve your design, uh, to help you make your design more effective and efficient and reduce risk in your design. So we'll show you those case studies. And then uh, we'll uh, finish up with uh, a discussion of the licensing options. Um, we have some what we feel are very flexible licensing options for ORCA CFD. And lastly, uh, have some closing remarks uh, at the end. And if time permits, uh, we may answer a, a few questions that you uh, you can ask. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if Bruce mentioned, but there's a chat window uh, in the, um, uh, the uh, GoToMeeting 
uh, controls so you can ask questions there. I believe there's also a questions window. So uh, any questions you pose there, if we don't, aren't able to answer them during the webinar, we'll uh, follow up afterwards uh, in the follow-up email. Okay, so with that, let's talk a little bit about the vision for Orca CFD. You know, CFD has been around for quite a while, um, but historically it's been uh, expensive, uh, both in terms of the computational resources that you need to do CFD analysis and the technical expertise. Um, you know, you see a lot of uh, PhD studies involving uh, computational fluid dynamics, but it's been around long enough and has matured enough that we really want, thought it was important to bring the capability into the design world, into uh, to naval architects, to engineers to use the tool. Um, so really our primary vision for Orca Marine CFD was to bring CFD analysis to the non-expert, to the, to the engineer, to the naval architect in order to accomplish uh, a few goals. Uh, first, in order to evaluate the hydrodynamic um, and aerodynamic performance, because we do model both air and water in these simulations, uh, for any hull type that you may analyze. So you're not limited to things that uh, empirical methods may typically be limited by um, with, with CFD. You can um, uh, model any uh, geometric features, any whether they're multi-hulls, monohulls, et cetera, all can be readily modeled and analyzed with uh, ORCA CFD. Um, so we want to allow you to, mod to model your designs, analyze things like appendages, as you see in the, in the picture at the lower right here, so you can uh, determine the influence of the fluid flow on different rudder designs, different shaft designs, et cetera. Um, we wanted to be able to have you minimize or at least uh, reduce the scope uh, of uh, model test programs. Some people uh, can, can afford, some programs can afford to handle model test programs, but if you can reduce the scope of those programs, um, that is good, a good thing. And in some cases, some programs cannot afford model test programs. Um, so uh, being able to do the analysis right on your computer with a more or less virtual towing tank, um, that was another goal uh, of, or part of the vision of Orca Marine CFD. Thirdly, to be able to perform high fidelity evaluations earlier in the design stage um, when decisions have the most impact. So, um, you know, it's later in the design stage when you can analyze errors is one use of the tool, but if you can use it earlier in the design phase, you can typically um, uh, have a bigger impact on your design. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we wanted to be able to minimize risk in the design by avoiding potentially costly design flaws before the design is built, okay? So that's the vision for Orca 3D Marines TFD. So in order to help us realize this vision, uh, we at Orca 3D teamed up with a company called Samerix that is known for their expertise in CFD. Um, Samerix has been providing CFD solutions to many high profile customers, like you see around uh, the list on the slide here, um, since 2005. Okay, so they, they uh, are, are very involved in things like turbo machinery, pumps, valves, automobile engines, other complex fluid systems. And uh, now with our partnership, um, they're uh, very prominent in the marine industry as well. Their tool for uh, CFD that we use in Orca CFD is called Samaric MP. That's their multi-purpose CFD product. And among its numerous modules, it has the ability to analyze multi-phase flow, which is required to model the free surface interaction between the air and uh, water fluid domains. Um, Samaric MP has been available to engineers and naval architects for, for years now. And although it's a pretty power, a very powerful tool, it has historically required a fair bit of expertise uh, to use and, and generally had to be a CFD analyst. But over the last few years, Samerix has been developing their CFD technology uh, as a software platform that can be integrated uh, in, or embedded into other applications. So uh, the partnership between Samerix and, and Orca 3D resulted in the first version of Orca CFD several years ago. Um, and so Orca Marine CFD is built on top of the Samaric's MP platform, as you can see here. 
they also support other uh, platform. Uh, some Eric's MP performs the underpinning to a tool called Creo Flow Analysis in the in the Creo system, and there's some Eric's MP for SolidWorks uh, in the SolidWorks uh, CAD system. Okay. So a little bit about the architecture for Orca 3D Marine CFD. Um, in order to implement our vision, uh, we developed this architecture that really tightly integrates Rhino, which is the general purpose CAD tool that many of you are familiar with, uh, with the Orca 3D Marine plugin. Uh, Orca 3D, as most of you know, adds marine specific functionality to the general purpose Rhino tool. So things like hydrostatics and stability, uh, weight and cost estimating, hull form design tools, and so forth. Uh, the CFD portion of the architecture uses this tool called Samaric MP, which is a general purpose uh, CFD tool. Um, in the context of Orca 3D Marine CFD, Samaric MP includes those modules that we need to analyze uh, marine specific problems. So not only obviously things like fluid flow, but the multi-phase uh, module that I had uh, referred to earlier, uh, turbulence module, dynamics. It's very important, um, for example, in a, in a uh, resistance analysis to allow your model, particularly a planing hole, but even displacement holes, to allow your models to move, to heave and pitch, because um, that that has a huge impact on uh, the performance of the vessel. So dynamics modules are included in it as well. And Samaric MP, we feel, has numerous advantages over some other CFD solutions out there. Specifically, and, and perhaps first and foremost, is its speed and robustness. Um, the speed with which you can run Samaric MP and Orca CFD means that you can run your analyses on an engineering desktop, uh, a contemporary engineering desktop, and get results uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, another area where there's a big advantage uh, to Samaric MP is the setup of your problems. Uh, setting up a CFD problem has historically been time consuming and somewhat difficult, but with the uh, very robust measure built into Samaric, uh, really the, the jet mesh generation is fully automated. So um, in a matter, as we'll show in a moment, in a matter of a few uh, seconds, you can have a fully uh, formed uh, CFD grid and ready to go. And the last part that is a huge advantage for Samaric MP is the domain specific template architecture. So what they've done is they've encompassed or built in, embedded is a better word, their expertise, their CFD analyst expertise in a, to a set of uh, domain-specific templates. So there's templates for the marine domain, of course, but there's templates for other domains as well. So that things like the mesh or uh, the time step or the solvers that are picked are all chosen for you automatically. So there's the part where you don't need to be the analyst. That analyst is sort of built into uh, the template. So in essence, what we're really after with Orca CFD is to leverage your Rhino design that you've spent time building, uh, modeling, analyzing with Orca uh, in order to facilitate high fidelity CFD analysis early on in the design when, again, when it has the most impact. Uh, so in terms of the workflow, and we'll show in a quick example of this in a moment, um, the workflow uh, is, is quite straightforward in Orca Marine CFD. Um, you start off with your Rhino model, um, the creation of the model, and oftentimes you'll use Orca to help you create the model because there's numerous design tools, things like real-time sections and real-time hydrostatics uh, that'll let you help uh, your de uh, you design your, your model. Once you have that designed, uh, you, there's a straightforward uh, interface which allows you to set up the CFD simulation. Uh, the information that gets transferred uh, shown here on the slide, it's essentially uh, your geometry, uh, your mass uh, properties of your of your model and your fluid properties, uh, the static equilibrium attitude, how the model floats in static equilibrium, things like your units and orientation. So we allow you to orient your model however you like and use whatever units you like, but we take care of that when you set up the CFD simulation uh, for informing uh, Samaric's MP what that 
what those units and orientation were, uh, and your propulsor information, and a few other bits of, of analysis information. But really, as I'll show in the next uh, moment with a quick demonstration, um, that setup uh, is, is very, very simple. Um, so with just a few button clicks um, in Orca and Rhino, you've set up your Samaritx MP simulation. You open up Samaritx MP and you, you click the start button to run the analysis. Uh, we do have uh, a feedback into Orca 3D in this con in the sense that you can analyze uh, the results that come out of Samaritx MP, the CFD analysis in Orca. There are, of course, uh, results analysis capabilities built into um, Samaritx itself, um, but um, we have some additional reporting capabilities uh, as part of the workflow uh, between Orca and, uh, and Samaritx MP. Okay, so uh, with that, um, I'm just going to do a very quick demonstration. I'm not going to belabor any of the points much. I just want those of you who haven't seen this before uh, just to understand how the process works. Um, so I've got a Rhino model open here um, where we use, we're using a, a high-speed planing hull. We'd like to use this hull because it has some interesting features. Uh, in terms of tunnels and appendages, lifting strakes, shafts and struts. Um, so the only real requirement on your model is that it form one or more closed solids. Uh, to do the analysis, you go under the Orca speed power menu, select marine CFD analysis, click on the geometry you want to analyze. In this case, it's just uh, one hull form, but if it was a multi-hull, you might have two hulls that you select. Uh, enter the information that's required in this dialogue, which consists of the mass properties, the displacement, the center of gravity, longitudinally, transversely, and vertically. Um, and you float the model at that weight and center of gravity in order to figure out what the sinkage trim and heel is. So that's been calculated. So now we have all of this information. Uh, we have some estimates of moments of inertia, which are fine. Um, you give your, your model a name, uh, a path where you want the output to go. You choose whether you're going to do a resistance or a powering analysis. Those are the two types of analyses that are built into the base version of Orca CFD. Uh, you give uh, the template a little bit of information about what type of hull you're running. In this case, it's a planing hull, so that's information it uses to help set up the CFD problem. You specify the speed that you want to analyze. You do what we call face attribution where you tell it a little bit about your model in terms of what things are hull surfaces, what things are deck surfaces. Um, you can see I've made the, the everything that's green here is, is considered a deck surface. You can even add your own uh, types of, uh, of face types. So I'm gonna add rudders here and drag a window around rudders. So, so now I've set up the, the, the problem to know a little bit more about the nature of the geometry. Um, and really that's it, you're ready to go. You click the run simulation button and launch the Samarix application. And what it does is it uh, opens up your model, it reads the geometry and it starts creating uh, the CFD mesh. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So now we're in the Samarix MP CFD program. We've got our fluid domain. You can see everything above the green plane is air and everything below is water. You can see all the same detail in the model um, that we had in our Rhino model. Okay. And all there is to do is hit the start button. So I'm going to hit start and I'm going to let this run during the course of our um, the rest of our webinar. And if we have time at the end, I'll come back um, and show you, um, uh, you know, how much progress it's made and where the simulation is. But I mainly wanted to get across to you that this process is very, very simple. Uh, once you have your model, Rhino model set, it's very easy to, to, to start the analysis. Okay. So going back to, um, to uh, the presentation, of course, a question that comes up, I have this tool that it's very easy to use. I can get results quickly, but how do I have any confidence uh, in, in the results uh, that I might be getting? So there's a number of ways um, that you can be confident in your results. First, as I mentioned earlier, 
this template, this marine template mechanism uh, that is implemented uh, captures the knowledge and expertise of the CFD analyst to set up the problem. So things like your time steps, um, your domain size, uh, your cell meshing, all of those things are in, in, uh, embedded into the marine template. So from in one sense, you have confidence that an expert in effect has set up the problem because that expertise is built into, um, into the marine template. Um, of course, that we, we also uh, want to have confidence by benchmarking uh, our results. So we've conducted numerous benchmarks uh, for a wide variety of models using uh, uh, industry available uh, data. So uh, we've looked at displacement hulls, planing hulls, and multi-hulls. So for displacement hulls, for example, uh, the David Taylor model base in 5415 is a very common model. Um, uh, Crisos has, uh, has a container ship and a VLCC. Um, we've, we've benchmarked against all of those. For planing hulls, uh, we've benchmarked against the Fritzma series, the General Prismatic Planing series. Um, and for multi-hulls, the, the Delft catamaran. But we've also done a lot of benchmarking or, or our users have done benchmarking for us with their own geometry. Of course, a lot of that, that information is, is proprietary, um, but in this specific example that you see on the screen now, um, we were fortunate enough that Viking Yachts was able to provide us with results of some model tests that they have done. Um, and you can see very, quite clearly the excellent agreement between the test results uh, and the uh, simulated results in ORCA CFD, both uh, for resistance, for sinkage, and for trim, all which come out of the, the CFD analysis. Um, of course, the best way um, to, to show that we're, we have, can have confidence in our results is that we have a lot of what we would call non-expert customers that are currently using the tool and using it successfully. So we have uh, lots of examples of designs that have been successfully uh, developed and built uh, at where Orca Marine CFD uh, was one of the tools that was used during the design process. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about the capabilities of both the base version of Orca CFD and the premium version. Um, so what can we do with the base version of Orca CFD? Well, um, the base version is targeted towards two specific types of analyses. Uh, one is calm water resistance, a sort of towing analysis straight ahead in, in calm water to measure drag, and a self-propelled analysis, which is similar straight ahead in calm water, except that instead of being towed, it's propelled by its own propellers that you define uh, as part of the input. Um, and even though those are, are two fairly simple uh, analyses, there's a lot you can do with them. And uh, I've, I'm violating one of the rules of, of PowerPoint presentations here in that uh, instead of just having uh, four bullets, I'm, I'm having a lot of bullets because I want to give you an idea of, uh, of all the different types of analyses um, that can be performed. This isn't, this isn't an exhaustive list, but I didn't want to just put three, uh, three items that you could do. I wanted to give you a much more complete idea. So, uh, of course, you can do optimization of your whole form for displacement and planing hulls, and you can look at... Um, multi hull design for spacing and placement of the hulls. You see an example in the image here where we're looking at the effect of hull separation on the, on the uh, wave flow, uh, wave patterns uh, for this particular model. You can optimize your, your appendages, uh, trim tabs, steps, look at where propeller tunnels should be placed. Uh, and ultimately you can look at either trying to maximize your speed of your design or minimize fuel consumption in other words, by minimizing drag of your design. Um, we also get heave and pitch, pitch prediction uh, from our analyses. So uh, for planing hulls, you might look at things like you're running trim angles. For displacement hulls, you might be thinking about operating in a restricted waterway of restricted depth. So sinkage can be an issue uh, if the model gets too, you know, your, your design gets too close to, say, a, a shallow bottom. Um, Stream lines can be looked at in air and for water. You can use those for a number of different uh, uh, analyses. Um, porpoising instability is another one, uh, particularly in the uh, in in the planing hull uh, design, to ensure that uh, your vessel is longitude has longitudinal stability. 
Um, so you can optimize your, your mass properties, figure out where your optimum center of gravity should be uh, in order to avoid a uh, porpoising condition. Uh, measuring forces and moments uh, can be used to figure out your design of your rudder system or your trim tab control system. Um, and lastly, another example is, is wake studies, uh, which can feed a propeller design and optimization process, or you can look at the wake flow uh, for designing a, a rudder, uh, twisted rudder shape. So uh, this isn't an exhaustive list, but it's just to give you an idea that even though we're saying the base version of the tool is aimed at calm water resistance and propulsion, there's a lot you can do with that and a lot you can derive with that capability alone. Okay, the premium version uh, opens up quite a bit more. Um, the base version is limited in to three degrees of freedom, but you get all six degree of freedom analyses in the premium version. So uh, not surprisingly, that opens up a, a lot of more possibilities. So with the premium version, um, you can do maneuvering simulations, which obviously uh, take place in the horizontal plane. So you bring in yaw and sway uh, into, into the available degrees of freedom. So captive maneuvering simulations, uh, we'll talk a little bit, bit about more about that in one of our examples. Uh, free running maneuvering simulations, Chen Jay, uh, we'll talk about that in, in, in his slides. You can look at things that involve uh, the roll degree of freedom like transverse instabilities and chine walking. Uh, roll damping simulations or motions in waves uh, as a capability, as you can see in this in this example here of this model running into head seas. Um, another capability in the premium are moving appendages. So having the ability to deflect the rudders uh, or move the trim tabs or rotate the propellers relative to the hull geometry is a capability of premium. So when you slide uh, lower right video that you see here, you see a, both a turning propeller, and if you look closely, you'll note that the rudder is being deflected as well, causing the vessel to turn. So um, so that's a capability in premium. So uh, one of the things to do to think about here is, is how these capabilities that are being exposed in the premium version might be used in your specific design context. There's a lot of different types of analysis you can do. Um, Detailed propulsor analysis, so you can model the propeller geometry, and here we're looking at uh, contra-rotating propeller design. Um, you can do the, the very uh, typical open water analysis, the, the propeller boat analysis, to measure things like thrust and torque uh, on a propeller and determine an, or generate an open water curve virtually without having to go into the tow tank. Uh, you can uh, examine cavitation characteristics because there is cavitation cap module capability in the premium version. Um, and you can look at interaction between the hull and the propeller. So you can run the propeller alone in an open water context, or you can run it together with the hull so you can uh, evaluate the interaction between the hull and the propeller. Uh, and water jet analysis, it's not limited just to typical screw propellers, uh, but things like water jets can be analyzed as well in order to, to um, uh, help, that, help you in the design of water jets. And something that's maybe a little something you know, out of the box, you know, this is a, a water turbine uh, where the uh, current in the water uh, causes the turbine to spin and, and generate uh, power. Uh, this is courtesy of hydrokinetic, as you can see here. But this is an example of a type of analysis that you can do with the premium version. Uh, makes no assumptions about the geometry. Um, you can use the premium version, say, to optimize uh, the number or pitch of the propeller blades um, and uh, uh, analyze various aspects of the flow um, in, in order to, to optimize the design. So the premium opens up uh, quite a bit of different capabilities. Um, one thing I will say is a lot of these analyses with the premium um, are take take a little longer to run than the than the um, uh, than the base version. Um, so so when you start to get into these more advanced analyses, some of them, not all of them, take longer to run. You you, you need to start considering uh, the hardware that you're going to be running the analyses on. Okay, so with that said, um, I want to pick up three case studies. We'll go through three case studies. I'll talk about the first two, and then uh, Chen Jay will take over the third uh, to show specific examples 
um, of ways in which the premium version of Orca Marine CFD can be used to improve your design. Because after all, that's what it's really about. It's, it's using this tool to make your design better. And while again, these are not ex an exhaustive list, there's three specific examples. It's a small subset of the possibilities, but you should think about how what you see here might be able to be extended in your design problem um, how you might be able to use the premium version to, to help your design. So the first case study will, will look at uh, ways in which the Orca CFD premium can be used to analyze and uh, reduce roll motions uh, via something we call roll decay simulation. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the second case study will investigate um, course stability. So we'll talk about what that means, core stability, and um, how you can use the CFD tool as sort of a virtual towing tank. Things that you would typically do in a towing tank, you can do very easily in the CFD program with Orca Marine CFD um, to evaluate the stability and perhaps improve the stability of your design. So that'll be the second case study. And then the third one will go well beyond these more simplistic examples in the first two and look at free running model simulations. So Chen Jay will talk about free running examples uh, and how you would uh, perform those types of analyses uh, with the premium version of Orca CFD. And you see an example here, actually of all three of these, the lower left is a, is a, is a roll decay study with velocity. So the vessel's moving forward and uh, is rolling at the same time. The middle image uh, is measurements of velocity in the fluid at different longitudinal points along the hull uh, in a in a what we call a captive model simulation and then the third one is showing a free running maneuvering uh, example uh, with the viking hull okay so for case study one what's the design problem the design problem is we have this mega yacht that we know is going to go out into the open ocean and we want to make sure we can control or at least reduce to the extent possible the roll motion uh, one common way of, of reducing roll motions uh, that are effect is effective both at zero speed and with speed are bilge keels. Uh, bilge keels, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, are essentially uh, plates that extend out normal or perpendicular to the surface near the turn of the bilge, um, extend over maybe a third of the length of the vessel typically, uh, and they help to reduce add damping, roll damping, to reduce uh, roll motions. So there's lots of rules of thumb that are commonly used, um, but with Orca CFD, you don't need to rely on rules of thumb. You can uh, use a more rigorous approach to optimize the design of your bilge keels. So um, there's a couple things that you're looking at doing when you're gonna uh, employ bilge keels in your design. First, of course, anytime you're adding area, like a plate to the side of your design, you're adding drag. So, you, so you're having that additional drag will either slow down the top speed or add uh, uh, fuel consumption at a particular speed because of the extra power that's required to overcome the drag. So you want to minimize the drag. You want to minimize the impact of adding bilge keels to your design. And we sort of discussed all this in a prior webinar, and I'll refer you to, I think it was our third webinar, but it, it's one of our webinars on our YouTube channel, where uh, uh, George Hazen had talked about um, how you align appendages, how you can use Orca CFD to align appendages to uh, to the the undisturbed flow. Uh, just to review briefly, in the lower left-hand corner here, you see an image of a model running at our design speed, and I've put streamlines on the hull so you can see how the flow goes naturally in the absence of any any bilge keels. Um, the next step would be to take that those streamlines over to your Rhino model where your geometry is, and align. You can see uh, how I've aligned the bilge keels, which are the yellow items showing on the sides of the hull here with the local flow, uh, uh, flow streamlines. So that means while they're, they will be adding frictional drag, hopefully they're not adding much in the way of pressure drag to your problem uh, at this speed because they're aligned with the flow. Uh, so ultimately you end up with a set of bilge keels the ones you see here are about two feet in span, two feet wide um, for your design. So this was all done with Orca CFD. And again, we, we've talked a little bit about this in a past webinar, how you use this alignment approach. But that's one example of how the base version, you don't need the, uh, the premium version, but how the base version can be used to uh, align your, your appendages. 
Now, as far as choosing the span or the length of, of the bilge keels, um, of course, as I mentioned, there are rules of thumb, but typically uh, the best way to do it is to actually place the bilge keel on your design and, and run a test, run a simulation. So we're gonna show you an example in a moment of the kinds of analysis we ran in order to do our bilge keel uh, sizing. The other nice benefit or extra piece of information that you get from the analysis we're gonna show here is that you can extract the dynamic pressures in order to provide loads for your structural design of your bilge keel. So uh, we'll show you how you do that in a moment. So the test that we're showing here, um, that, that the type of simulation, which was very easy to set up is what we call a roll decay. Uh, and this does require the premium, of course, because it's using uh, that roll degree of freedom. And what you do here is you, you start the model sitting still in water and you um, either start, it, start the hull at an angle, a roll angle, or in this case, we started it with a roll velocity. So we gave it an initial roll velocity and then let it go. So um, one way to think of a roll decay for those of you who, who haven't seen that type of a test before is um, you can think about it much in the way you would think about your, your system on your vehicle of having springs uh, to cushion the ride on your, on your automobile and shock absorbers to damp, to provide damping, right? So the springs provide the, the cushioning and the, sh and the shocks for the damping. So if you had a car with no shocks and no losses in it and you pushed on the hood, the car would just bounce up and down. But the shocks obviously provide a damping and will eventually dampen out the, the, um, uh, the motion. That's very similar to what we're seeing here in that we gave the uh, vessel an initial roll motion and we're letting the, uh, the, the damping cause the motion to decay. Um, in the case of, of, a, of a vessel, um, what you're really doing is you're balancing the, the inertial forces uh, and the hydrostatic restoring forces, and the damping is being provided by a number of sources. Um, in the lower image on the right, you can see waves being uh, radiated away from the hull as the vessel's rolling. Well, those waves take energy, so those wa that wave energy is one source of, of the damping. Um, in the upper image, you can see uh, what we're showing here is vorticity in the flow. And you can see at the tips of the bilge keels, a uh, significant amount of vorticity being generated. And that is also providing uh, a significant amount of damping uh, to the flow. So the, the time history of roll that you see on the left is showing the initial large peak and then a slow uh, or uh, varying uh, decrement of, of magnitude as the damping uh, occurs. Um, so this type of a test, which is very simple, you give it a give it an initial roll, it's in calm water, and let it damp out, allows you to generate, uh, determine things like the natural period of your design, the natural roll period, which is an important aspect of, of most designs. Uh, it lets you evaluate the damping with and without bilge keels, so you can compare the damping coefficient, you know, uh, with and without bilge keels to see if your bilge keels are being effective. And again, you can determine your pressure distribution on your bilge keels, which can be an input to your structural design. So how do you analyze the roll decay results? It's actually quite simple. Um, this is the same roll decay history that we were looking at earlier. Um, in order to get the period, the roll natural, what we call natural roll period, T sub n, you just look at the time between peaks. So in this case, it was about 10 and a half seconds. So what that means is, Anytime I'm receiving an excitation, say from a wave, a seaway at about 10 and a half seconds in roll, uh, that's that's my my uh, natural period. That's my worst case. That's my resonant roll condition. So in general, you would like to try to avoid uh, uh, that condition. But that's a condition to be aware of in terms of sea state, sea condition uh, for for roll motions for this vessel. It also plays into things like accelerations, right? You want the crew to be able to carry out its tasks. You want the guests to be comfortable and um, knowing what the roll period is can give you some insight into uh, your roll accelerations. Uh, if your roll period is very, very short, typically that implies a, a higher acceleration, uh, which, which can reduce crew comfort. So this is a very useful way to get um, uh, the, the roll natural period. 
The other part is what I referred to earlier is the roll damping coefficient. So I've put a couple of uh, references here at the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to uh, uh, post-process a roll decay experiment in order to uh, develop the roll uh, damping coefficient. But a traditional way that's shown here is you, you flip all the uh, roll signal that's in the negative side of space, the negative roll angles up to positive, and you, you take the peak values like you see here with the red dots, and you look at the decrement, the change in those peak values versus the average roll. So in effect, you're, you're fitting a curve through those values, and you can extract through that processing what we call the roll damping coefficient. Um, in general, most people, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything to, you know, to have the roll damping coefficient, but what it can be used for is a lot of times when you're running C-keeping analyses, uh, you, you, there's a lot of speeds relative wave headings uh, and wave conditions that you want to analyze. And many times people use what we call a potential flow tool, uh, which is a simplified tool for analyzing sea keeping. Um, they're very fast and easy to run, but because they're potential flow, they don't really know much about the viscous properties, the viscous flow. That's not part of the potential flow theory. Um, so they have empirical or semi-empirical methods built in to try to estimate the effects of things like bilge keels or other, other viscous damping. With a tool like this, you can do this analysis, which is a very simple analysis, and you can use that either as input to the potential flow tool or as a calibrator uh, to calibrate your potential flow tool. So that's, that's one use of this roll damping coefficient. And of course, you can compare the roll decay behavior both with and without bilge keels. So here in the blue, we have our with bilge keel and in orange without bilge keels. And you can see how much more quickly uh, the, uh, the damping occurs with the bilge keel. So you can clearly see, get a, get a feel for the magnitude of the effect of the, of the bilge keel damping. And lastly, as I mentioned before, um, you can extract the dynamic pressure uh, to help you design the structure behind your bilge keel. So as you see here, um, I've picked the point uh, in the roll motion where the velocity was maximum. And you can extract those pressures on the bilge keel uh, and use them, say, in your FEA code in order to apply a load in your FEA code that you've measured from your, uh, from your CFD experiment. So it can support um, downstream analyses like uh, your structural analyses. So um, with all that behind us, perhaps a more pragmatic way that people understand um, rolling is to actually put it in a seaway. So in this example here, we actually put our model in beam Cs, in regular beam Cs, uh, at the resonant period. So we're very close. I picked a period of 10 seconds. So these are 10 second Cs period of 10 seconds with one and a half meter height. And you can see on the right how the model started out just with a very small roll angle, but because it's being excited at its resonant frequency, uh, it eventually starts rolling very, very significantly. So um, that view shows the model rolling without bilge keels. We have a similar one uh, with bilge keels, but essentially by doing that, what you get is you can see the reduction in roll magnitude in resonance by adding the bilge keel. Um, and this time history here shows you that plot. And for this particular bilge keel, we observed about a 20 to 25% reduction in resonant roll amplitude with the bilge keels. So that's a measure that most people can understand what that means uh, physically. Um, and you can use this approach to optimize the, both the span and the length of your bilge keels, right? So um, by doing so, you can um, you can pick the optimum bilge keel that uh, minimizes drag but still improves roll. So Orca CFD Premium, as a conclusion, can be used to optimize the bilge keel design by both aligning them with the flow uh, to minimize drag, evaluating their effectiveness, and facilitating structural design. And you can think about other types of analyses with roll the roll degree of freedom, for example. Uh, chine walking for planing hulls or banking into and out of a turn when you're doing a turn with a planing hull. Um, these all involve the roll degree of freedom or all, and all things that you can do with the um, premium version. 
The second case study is a little different. Um, larger ships have become increasingly difficult to maneuver and control. So what we have here is a DLCC, a very large crew carrier. And you can see it has a large bulb at the bow. That bulb tends to destabilize the directional stability of the vessel. They also, a lot of these vessels have bulbous skegs instead of a, a, a sort of flat plate skeg, uh, which those bulbous skegs don't offer near as much uh, cross flow drag at the stern. So uh, they're not as effective in stabilizing the vessel. You have a horn red rudder, relatively small, not as quite as effective as a spade. And a lot of spade rudder and a lot of these uh, super uh, large ships say a row row or a car carry have very large superstructures, uh, which together with the wind can lead to a fair bit of instability. So core stability is a very, and maneuvering performance is a very important aspect of these large vessel designs. And one of the things you can do with Orca CFD Premium is evaluate the directional stability um, by performing captive model tests, much in the same way as you would in a towing tank. Um, you can also generate hydrodynamic coefficients that will can be used later with uh, nonlinear maneuvering simulation models. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. So the linear, linear directional stability criterion, I don't want to belabor the equation, but basically there's an equation that says if you can determine certain hydrodynamic coefficients of your vessel uh, design, you can uh, estimate whether it is directionally stable or not. And by directional stability, I mean, if a vessel is going straight with its controls fixed, its rudders fixed, and it receives a little disturbance, say from a wave or wind, does it tend to come back to the direction it was originally heading or does it start oscillating? Does it require a lot of control by the helmsman in order to bring it back under control? These are all very important uh, uh, items to understand, especially if you're operating in a, a restricted maneuvering area. So uh, this formula you're looking at here is a way of evaluating uh, the directional stability of your vessel. So the question becomes, how can I evaluate those coefficients there that go in, into uh, that equation? And they can be evaluated through captive model experiments. Um, you may have uh, learned about these uh, in your studies. Uh, there are facilities uh, around the world for uh, evaluating them through experiments. Typically, these captive model tests for this particular analysis take two forms. One is a pure sway analysis. So by pure sway, you see here, I, I have a model that's getting towed down the tank, but it's at an angle of attack relative to the direction that it's moving. So it's moving at an angle of attack and you can measure the rotational forces on the, on the model and the side forces on the model as it's being towed down the tank. And you would do that at a number of different angles, uh, what we call drift angles. Uh, the other type of analysis that we need to get these coefficients is a pure yaw analysis. So in pure yaw, typically the way that's been done in a towing tank is you attach your model to a big rotating arm and you rotate that arm around in a circle. So it's the, the model is experiencing pure yaw. And again, you measure the moments that's causing it to yaw and the forces, the side forces on it uh, as it's rotating around. And you do that for different radii you move the, the vessel at different radii along the arm in order to get the variation of those forces with yaw rate. So that's typically how that was done in a, in a towing tank, uh, it has been done in a towing tank for years, is you measure those uh, and then process those forces in moments. But Orca Premium can be used to also perform captive mo mo uh, maneuvering simulations uh, very easily. So here's an example of the pure uh, sway example. I, you can see I've got a drift angle of four degrees. Um, here's with eight degrees. So you can see different examples and you can see how the flow patterns are changing as I change the drift angle of the model. In all these, the model is being dragged from left to right down the tank at a constant speed and I'm just changing the drift angle and measuring the yawing moments and forces. I do the same thing for pure sway take the model and rotate it uh, around different radii, uh, around a, a circle of different radii to get the forces and moments as a function of, uh, of, of yaw rate. And this is a very, very simple, because there's no dynamics in these models, they're very simple and very fast to run. The model is captive, it's fixed, and we're measuring forces, so it runs very quickly. Of course, we wanna make sure we validate these types of analyses. So we've performed various validation studies, these show uh, the sway force measurements and 
from CF from experiments compared to CFD and the all moment measurements compared to CFD and you can see very good agreement. And when we do this analysis on our own, uh, we find that uh, each one of these dots corresponds to a different drift angle or over here to a different radius. When you plot them, you can use a very simple analysis with a tool like Excel to fit a curve through your measurements, through your measured forces, which come out of the CFD and your measured moments that come out of the CFD. And Excel basically gives you those coefficients, which are the slopes of these curves at, at zero. So all of these coefficients, these derivatives, are related to the slopes of these curves where they go through zero. And so it becomes very simple to use Orca CFD to evaluate your stability. In this particular example, I got a number 0.022, which just means that I am directionally stable. If I reach, if this hull was to uh, experience a disturbance, it would come back to a stable straight line uh, course. Uh, if it was negative, that would mean it, was be, it would be unstable and you would have to look at things to do to your design in order to improve its directional stability. So in short, pure sway and pure yaw are very easy to simulate with Orca CFD and run very quickly. Um, captive simulations also provide input to nonlinear maneuvering models for doing things like definitive maneuvers, turns, zigzags, uh, so forth. They can also be used to provide input to training simulators for operator training. So the drivers, the operators learn how to drive a particular vessel and understand its characteristics and how it behaves. Uh, so in conclusion, Orca CFD Premium can be used to evaluate controllability uh, and simulate maneuvers with, with these captive model tests. Um, and it can also be used to do other types of simulations. This is a, a PMM simulation where, again, you're, you're looking at the same types of captive simulations, but with a different technique known as a planar motions mechanism or PMM. We have pure sway at the top, pure yaw in the middle, and that combination, you can do any combination of sway and yaw. Uh, with with CFD. Um, here's a specific example where we looked at effectiveness of a rudder at various angles of deflection. So you can see this horn rudder changing its deflection angle and, and you can measure forces and moments uh, and look at the flow patterns with these different angles. Okay, so those are the first two case studies. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, hand it over to uh, Chenjay to go through the more complex simulations, which are the free-running simulations. Chenjay? Yeah, thank you very much, Larry. Yeah, so for the case study three, we're going to talk about a little bit about the free-running simulation. As, uh, as Larry just uh, talked about the captain, so you will be able to get some of the hydrodynamic coefficient and uh, it will help you to determine the maneuverability of the ship. But uh, in order to in order to do that, you will take several assumptions. Um, sometimes it's not exactly the same as the free run model test or the your true sea trial. So the purpose of the free running simulation is we want to have an apple to apple comparison. So instead of using quite a different combination of the ship movement, we just do what uh, the captain will operate in the real life. So for example, the turning circle maneuver. So we will keep a straight course at certain RPM for the propeller and the rotated propeller to propel itself. Then at certain point, we are going to turn our rudder and to see the response. Here's an example from the free run simulation versus an experiment. As you see, the main thing, the circle radius, we compare very well with the experiment. And since it's an apple to apple comparison, so we are basically can compare the same thing. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, Larry. Yeah, and uh, also from that, we can since we take no assumptions, so we know when we turn the rudder, there will be added the drag, and over here we can see during the turn how much the surge velocity drops. As you see, we just normalize it with its uh, straight course velocity. Then during the turn, we, even though we keep the same RPM, we still see the velocity dropped only probably like 35% of its original velocity, and we capture it very well, as well as the yaw rate. So this gives us more insights to know what's a fact, and basically since we take no assumptions, we don't need to worry about how we model the rudder, 
how we model the propeller, how we are going to using the open water propeller curve to fit everything since we are using the exactly same geometry. So we just take as is and just run as what you would normally do in a model test or in a real C trial. And just doing the apple to apple comparison just give you like intu intuitive things. And the uh, next piece. And more, as you see here, we have both the rudder and the propeller. And uh, from that, Larry has mentioned in the row damping, you can look at the, the pressure distribution. Over here, we can do the same thing. Then we can know during the turn how much force uh, the propeller has been experienced, like in uh, extreme turning, whether it will be some hot spots in your structure, which break your propeller, hopefully not, or it just bring too much uh, force into the rudder. And then we do have the customer reporting to us say, well, in some extreme term, since the propeller and the, the rudder, they interact with each other, you have some pretty bad oscillation, and they are using our software to find some way to improve their design to get rid of those problems. And it's hard for you to try, try, uh, uh, try an error in the real life, since it's probably cost a lot, but you can try a lot of different designs in the simulation tools. And then next, please. Well, another canonical maneuver is the zigzag maneuver. Here is an O and R T ship uh, experiencing the zigzag test. Basically, we are going to change the rudder, and it will be based on its heading angle. And then next, please. By doing that, we are also doing an apple to apple comparison, just like what you would do in a C trial or a model test. So you are going to uh, compare the rudder angle. You are going to compare the heading angle. And we are going to compare the row angle. As, as we see here, we have a fairly good comparison with the experimental data for in the zigzag 20 over 20 maneuver. Uh, next, please. And uh, over here, you can see very clearly on the top right. So you can see the response of the ship. When you reach the heading angle, we turn the rudder. And uh, almost at the same time, you see how the how the ship responds, especially in the role for this kind of like combat ship. And uh, of course, you can see how the pressure is different. How, what's the pressure difference between the two propeller and between the propeller blades? It can help you to identify the hot spots in the shaft, in the propeller, in the rudder, so that to, so that it can enhance your structure. And the next piece. Okay. Besides the two canonical problem, as I said, as we said, it is a just try to mimic what you will do in the real life. So here is an example from water. And uh, what you will experience is that sometimes you want to try some extreme cases, but it might be too dangerous, or you don't want the, the boat to break. But you can try those things in the in the simulation. So here is um, a hard turning. Basically, we keep the high speed and the turn. And we don't know what will happen. And because sometimes when, at, as, a cap, as a person who operates it, when you feel something bad is going to happen, you are going to reduce the speed. But in the simulation, we don't need to. We just keep pushing the power and make the turn to see what happens. Whether it will capsize or it's just banking a lot or it's just scary. Well, as you see, the, luckily the, the boat didn't uh, capsize and come back. But frankly speaking, you probably don't want to try it yourself in the real life. And the next, please. And this video, you probably see it a lot. It's the Viking Sea Trial. And then we do our comparison. Also, it's in the, it's go to extreme, uh, according to Joe. Basically, you want to put the rudder into its extreme to see how the boat responds. And then you are going to come back, say, well, it's too much roll and it's make the crew uncomfortable. So you might just come back a little bit or tune the power a little bit to make it uh, to doing the fine tune for your design boat. So next, please. And uh, by doing that again as a simulation, you get all the physical physical properties you probably cannot get um, in the real life because it's hard to measure all of those. But in the simulation, since we are calculating all of those, we are going to provide these things. And over here is a dynamic pressure at the bottom and especially at the shaft and the rudder. You can see how much force has been 
put onto your rudder, and you can decide whether you want to enlarge it or you want to reduce it, and you can determine how how strong your axis should be to, to support your rudder. And then next, please. So basically, the free range simulation, the purpose is to try to mimic the model test and the sea trial and make you the captain so that you can find a lot of complex fluid uh, phenomenon. Since we take very little assumptions here compared to the captive, captive test. And also, it allows you to execute some hard or dangerous maneuvers you probably don't want to try in the real life. Since if it's go wrong, you probably it costs you a lot of money. But of course, it uh, requires more processing power and uh, a little bit more expertise so that you need to understand why you, why you want to do this simulation and what you want to get from this simulation. And next, please. And of, of course, we have a lot of complex examples as a premium version, just like uh, Bruce and Larry said, virtually it's like um, limitless and anything you can think about in the real life, we, will, we can try to simulate. For example, on the top left, it's in the dishwasher. So it's just like every everybody is applying. So we just simulate those and to see how much force is on that, whether it can clean your plate or not. And uh, if you have uh, uh, the the left down, it's an attack sloshing test versus uh, the experiment. For example, if you have a big fuel tank, whether it will affect your your body, whether it will affect your hull or if you are designing a cruise ship and you have a swimming pool there, whether the swimming pool will be calm or it's a lot of water just being splashed up, it's, uh, you can uh, simulate those as well. And also you can do, I mean, some of those you might not be really interested, but uh, it's trying to show the capability of the SMAX itself. It's like uh, you have the G-rotor, you have a twin, twin screw pumps and how these things can transfer the fluids. And also if you, you want to know like how much uh, the heat transfer on the on the top, uh, the uh, down right it's a heat transfer example so you can if you have a very hot engine room then you can also use our software to probably uh, know why there is some hot spots and uh, find some way to to just improve it all right I think that's it next. Okay, thank you, Cheng Jay. Uh, so today you've seen that Orca 3D Marine CFD is accurate. As Larry mentioned, we've run many benchmarks with both public and proprietary data with excellent results. It's affordable. We have flexible licensing options at a reasonable, straightforward, and published price, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. It's reliable, so you can get consistent results without having to be an expert due to the ORCA 3D interface and the smart templates. And it's fast. So fast means not just running of the analysis, but also fast setup, fast meshing, and of course the fast solver. So you not only can get the results relatively quickly, if you need to make changes to your model and rerun it, that whole process also goes very quickly. And it's capable. So the base version can tackle a wide range of problems, and the premium version, basically the sky's the limit, as you've just seen, if any, any of you want to become dishwasher designers, uh, this is the correct tool for you. So it's a very powerful system, uh, but yet it's still approachable by non-CFD specialists. So this table really just lists some of the types of analyses that can be done, and if you have something in mind that you don't see here in this list, you can contact us and we'll discuss the best approach to solving that design problem. Next slide, please, Larry. So I just wanna highlight the two types of licenses that we offer as full-time and intermittent. So full-time is just that. For example, with a 12-month full-time license, you can run the software as much as you like during those 12 months. With an intermittent license, you are purchasing multiple one month licenses. For example, with the 312 intermittent license, you have three one month licenses to use within a 12 month period. This allows you to spread out the usage to coincide with your workload 
if if your workload doesn't justify a full-time license. All of these licensing options include technical support, any software updates that become available, and an online orientation session to help you get started. Of course, the system requires that you have a license for the Orca 3D plugin to Rhino, and you need uh, level two of Orca 3D. Next slide, please. So in the next day or two, you'll receive an email with a link to the recording of this webinar, as well as the past webinars, a summary of questions that were submitted and their answers, pricing information, and information on how to schedule a private online demo and a free 30-day evaluation copy of Orca 3D Marine CFD. For those of you who don't have Rhino or Orca 3D, you can download evaluation licenses, but note that the Orca 3D installation doesn't include the CFD module by default. We can arrange that evaluation with you separately. So remember that you can always contact us with questions at support at orca3d.com. And I wanna thank Larry and Cheng Jay for a great presentation today. And thank you all for attending and for your questions. And this ends the webinar.